Ever since Kizaru's introduction in chapter 504, episode 398, he's been a man that has maintained frame even in very extreme situations. When Rayleigh kicked Kizaru's leg away, saving Zoro in chapter 511, or in the next chapter, when he cut off Kizaru's teleportation and grazed his cheek with a cut, Kizaru maintained frame. When Marco blocked his Yasakani Sigur Jewel Barrage in 553 to protect Whitebeard, and then the next chapter took an attack from Marco after he plowed through another light barrage, Kizaru maintained frame. When the Whitebeard Pirate Division commanders came bellowing his way in chapter 562, or even when Whitebeard himself attacked a man in chapter 570, Kizaru maintained frame. It took Ben Beckman, ooh, to, to, to. it took Ben Beckman to make Kizaru buckle for the first time in the pre-time skip, but a chapter later in 580, he's back to the offensive and he's trying to take out the polar tank. Now, of course, we jump all the way to the current Egghead Island arc where Kizaru has returned and he's returned in full force. And Kizaru handles Sentomaru but Luffy, woo! Luffy has been a roller coaster ride for the Yellow Monkey, and not a fun one. <laughs> That's how bad it's been, and, and seemingly gonna continue that way after the end of chapter 1108. My God, that mm, that vice grip, my goodness. But to be fair, Kizar was handling trading with Snake Man Luffy, but then come the end of that chapter when he got grabbed by the Gear Five, we saw him really buckle. We saw the sweat. We saw the comments. The Nika Madness is without a doubt some terrifying business. However, the next chapter, 1093, while Monkey D. Luffy's doing all these weird things, Kizaru maintains frame. Even when Luffy eats a laser projectile, like he's curved, he just he just swallows it. Swallow, he swallows it. He's sick to my stomachs, fam. Kizaru, no reaction, nothing. And during and after the White Star Gun. Phenomenal work by Monkey D. Nika Luffy, where the first attack that he hits Kizaru with incapacitates him for a period of time, but Kizaru is still ultimately maintaining frame. Except for when he did it. Out of all the things I listed off prior to this moment, nothing made Kizaru buckle more, shook to the point of actually breaking character than what Sanji did when he kicked his laser. Not the first time in chapter 1106, but the second time in 1107. Why? What? Why did this woman shake up Kizaru so bad to the point where he was talking about scrapping the physics books? Not the love reason that Sanji gives, but the real reason that shook Frankie, that shook Kizaru. What really happened in that moment? Because I've heard so many different takes on what exactly could have happened. And I think this does harken back to some old, some pretty old One Piece tech. Skypean. Ah, oh, some Skypean tech. And I promise you, there is a method to the madness. But before we go down that road, we gotta go over here real quick and have a brief word for today's sponsor. Look in my eyes. You guys wanna do something? You guys. That's what I thought. And today's sponsor is none other than the Surfshark VPN. Oh! You see, the World Wide Web absolutely is a very dangerous place. One false step, one wrong move. <gasps> and you will find out that your week, your month, your year could be completely ruined. And that's why for my fellow weebs out there across the world, I know that we explore some very interesting locations and some very interesting places on the web. Lord have mercy, I'm about to- But you need protection. You need safety. And Surfshark VPN absolutely has your back with dope features like the clean web feature that clears up any malware, any viruses, any bad actors that may try and ruin your day. I am a big dude. Duh. And part of the reason why is because of them sweet, delicious cookies. Absolutely. But I hate them. I detest them online. So Surfshark VPN is my online dietitian as well. And it's my dietitian everywhere. My desktop, my laptop, my phone, wherever I am, I can have Surfshark VPN 
protecting me, making sure I am secure, safe, and sound. Furthermore, if you want access to, let's say, any region-gated content, let's say on Netflix, let's say on Hulu, and even my own channel, since I do have region-gated content. What did he say? And you want to gain access to this region-gated content, then you can easily do so by changing the location that you are located in with Surfshark VPN, and with the click of a button, that region-locked content has now been unlocked. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, go in the description box down below. You use code COL, that is K-O-L, to get an exclusive offer and three months free. Once again, use code COL, and now let's get back into the video. In the flash. So let's answer the question, why? There are a few options from worst to best, and the best option is what I currently think, obviously, and it does tie to a tweet that Sandman of All Long Park made about this particular moment in chapter 1107. However, obviously, we gotta save the best for last, and like Hizaru, we have to maintain frame, and let's start from the bottom up. Number one, the laser beam Kizaru fired at Bonnie and Vegapunk was a very weak laser beam because he felt sympathetic to them and didn't actually want to kill them. Hence his eyes being closed beforehand and thus the attack is easy for Sanji to handle with the power of quote unquote love activated. Now, this to me is very, like extremely unlikely, especially since we saw Kizaru literally stab Vegapunk with a lightsaber, drilling a hole into him in late chapter one piece 1108. Though I can see some folks saying, well, maybe the sword wasn't as hot as usual. Oh my goodness, potentially. But, but, I would say highly, highly unlikely. Beyond that though, with the clear, obvious killing intent that Kizaru had for Bonnie and Vegapunk solidified in the next chapter, the beam that we see Sanji kick is made from the okay sign that Kizaru makes. It's the same kind of beam that we see Kizaru fire two times in chapter 1094, where he almost incinerated the Vega Tank 8 and he fired that attack towards Gear 5 Luffy before Luffy got hit by it and then spun around and ricocheted and gave the White Star gun to Kizaru. And Frankie's own reaction and Kizaru's own reaction about physics being dead and so on, if love clears light, would also clearly attest to this not being a weak attack by any measure. So eyes closed or not, doesn't matter to me, I think it's a kill shot through and through on both Vegapunk and Bonnie, without a doubt. Now, reason number two is that the tech that Atlas uses for her light pressure gloves in 1062 is somehow incorporated into Sanji's boots, or he's maybe wearing light pressure greaves somewhere. This is not as egregious as, I guess, the first point, but I don't get it. Obviously, if this were to work, it has to be done off screen. We're at some point off screen during their time together, Atlas gave Sanji new equipment to try and take on Kizaru. Outside of the obvious where we don't see any new equipment on his legs and the dome shoes have never been stated to have that feature. The obvious question would be, hold on, why just Sanji, why not Frankie? Atlas herself is wearing her light pressure gloves. But the entire time we see her with Sanji from chapter 1093 and onwards, if she gave Sanji some equipment to fight against Kizaru, then she would clearly get up to Frankie as well, particularly when Frankie is more of a fist fighter, obviously compared to Sanji, and her gloves would be a clearly better fit for Frankie. And because Frankie and Sanji have been together for a while now, Frankie himself would have seen this happen, likely, and therefore not be so surprised when he saw Sanji pump the laser. But he was. Nani! So I'm not saying it's impossible, but it seems very unlikely that she would just spawn new equipment out of thin air, given this very intense situation, and give it to Sanji, and Sanji only for some weird reason, and not Frankie. She's not Luffy, she just can't manifest things out of thin air. There is only one Nika D. But now let's get on to number three, and number three is simply hockey. Sanji used pretty strong armor hockey at that moment, on his leg to kick the beat. It's simple, effective, plus we do see white sparks coming from that impact of the moment, which could, not a guarantee, but it could be hockey related. And I think this could also explain how Sanji kicked the first projectile in 1106. And I would actually say it is likely that the case was hockey, that was the core reason why he could kick that projectile in 1106. 
but not the 1107 moment. No, I would say that's actually different. Part of the reason why is that we can jump back to chapter 1092. Luffy, I think, has overall better armor hockey than Sanji does. And Kizaru is tussling against a snake man Luffy who's right in his face, attacking but also blocking these light projectiles. Kizaru did say it was pretty powerful stuff, but he maintained frame, he didn't break character. So why is it the Sanji one breaks character, <laughs> but for the Luffy one, he does not break character. Scary. What's up with that? And then I would argue that what we see Luffy do in chapter 1093 is probably more in lockstep with Sanji's moment in 1106. Luffy kicks all those hologram clones, Sanji kicks a light projectile, and then they disperse. And there's a good chance Sanji and Luffy have hockey on their legs, visible or not, they have hockey on their legs at those points in time. However, given what Sandman says on his Twitter, and again, the reactions of Kizar and Frankie, the chapter 1171 is different. Tell me. Before we get to the reason why, number five, number four, it's potentially not involving the destruction of the beam itself, but rather the speed at which Sanji gets to that position. We know that Sanji is very fast with the German abilities on, and the distance between Kizaru and Bonnie is like, what, 10, 15 yards? Pretty damn close particularly when talking about a beam of light. Yeah, very close, horrifically close. Sanji coming in the middle of that, while Kizaru's eyes are closed, and what the hell's happening here, that could be the reason why Kizaru was so shook. Though again, what Frankie says is that he's referring to the beam itself. And when Sanji says love is over light, that's also talking about the beam. Speed matters, yes, but the most important thing is the laser beam. Albeit, Marco was very close to Whitebeard, when he blocked that Kizaru barrage, and Luffy, again, in 1092, was right in Kizaru's face when he was in Snake Man, attacking and swatting away projectiles that were like literally in his face. Though both Marco and Luffy were handling light projectile volleys, barrages, where Asandi snuffs out the okay beam. So let's say that beam is typically stronger than a random volley of light orbs, and that could also play a role as to why Kizaru was so shocked. So that in combination with hockey plus speed could be the answer overall. However, mm, whoop, whoop, here I come. I would say the best answer ties to something we haven't seen, I think, since Skypea. And here's what Sam of All On Park said on his Twitter referring to this moment. The Japanese onomatopoeia used when Sanji disables Kizaru's laser is something like a sound of a tire or balloon bursting or a sound of a gunshot. Kizaru's surprise face is more than I imagined. So I would say that when we see that white spark in the middle of all of that photon discharging, I would say that that wasn't hockey slash light pressure gauntlet greaves or gloves or whatever the hell, no. I think that it is Ifrit, Ifrit Jambe, it is Ifrit leg related. Sanji, I think momentarily used his Ifrit leg while striking the beam. And we know that white sparks are a sign of that based on chapter 1034. So this appears to be genuine lightning, actual plasma, and not, let's say, hockey related lightning. And based on what Sandman says, that there is a gunshot or a tire popping, exploding, that to me clicks in NL. Why? Number one, I'm a fanboy, duh. But number two is that this comes down to not a hockey thing, but an energy and temperature thing. Yeah. <laughs> I would argue that the energy difference that we see between Wiper and NL in chapter 275, when NL snuffs out Wiper's burn bazooka is playing out in a similar way here in that instant between Kizaru's laser and Sanji's Ifri Lei, his Ifri Jambe. Hence me saying Skypea tech, not necessarily actual Skypean technology, but more so a technique that we saw at Skypea. A tire needs to get pretty damn hot in order for it to actually explode. And we know that Sanji's fire in Ifri Jame form is abnormally, abnormally hot, just considering the fact that he makes lightning as a byproduct of initiating Ifri Jame. And how it typically works with Sanji is that all that fire, all that heat 
is just contained in the leg and not really affecting the outer environment unless he is actually attacking said environment or an individual. That's why let's say you have his leg on the floor and it's not damaging the floor, but when he actually strikes, it's, it's massive damage and massive heat to whatever he's attacking. And in this case here, the target was the OK sign laser beam. And plus, keep in mind this fact too, that Oda already said in an SBS years ago that Sanji's soul was much, much hotter than regular fire. The Ifri is on a whole new scale compared to the Devil Lake, to the point where it requires Sanji's natural physique, it requires hockey hardening to protect his leg on top of the German enhancements, the exoskeleton, all of that is required to just handle the usage of the Ifri Jambe. So once again, the same way Anna could snuff out the flames of Wiper in 275, the force and the heat, the heat of the Ifrit attack itself could completely annihilate, annihilate the laser beam in a fashion that hasn't been seen up until that particular moment. Because no other character that Kizaru has dealt with could output the same if not even a higher level of heat, of energy, at least in that moment and in that particular moment, of course. Because to be clear here, Sanji, I think overall is weaker than Kizaru. I'm talking about this particular specific moment. But no other character has the ability to do the same thing than Sanji. He, that is the only key difference between Sanji and everyone else among the list of people that Kizaru has dealt with over the entire series. Heat. Temperature, energy. And that is Oda's way of, I think, depicting that difference. Hence why chapters 1106 and 7 are different. We're in 1106 because we don't see the Sanji swirls active, he cannot use the Ifrit. Therefore, when he blocks, it's hockey related, and the light orb that hits his leg, it disperses. But in 1107, he pops the beam, he annihilates the beam, going as far as to say that he's destroying the very photons themselves. It sounds impossible, but it's a cartoon, it's a manga. Anything is possible. With greater force and particularly greater temperature because the Dremor powers, the power of love, is active and he has access to the Ifri. But hey, I could be capping and Oda could say, hey yo, Chris, nice try but you're dead wrong. That's my best option. I would say overall, the last three options I think are the most likely, for sure. But let me know, let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell to join the notification squad. We'll see when the anime gets to it. Maybe they'll have their own crazy whatever the hell take on what happened there at that moment. But right now, I think if it was used for that brief window of time, and Sanji devastated. So until then, I'm gonna see you guys later. Be safe, take care. I'll catch you on the flip side. See you, bye bye.